Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Ji Xiaojun in Beijing. And today we're continuing to follow the exploration of the ancient city of Zhuolu in Hebei province, known locally as Huangdi City. Now, China's Han nationality consider Huangdi, or the Yellow Emperor, to be their earliest ancestor. So naturally, the possibility that his capital city might have been found created considerable interest. The problem for the archaeologists and historians was to prove that Zhuolu was indeed Huangdi's city. Well, in March 1997, the Hebei Provincial Cultural Relics Bureau dispatched a team of archaeologists to Zhuolu to conduct further investigations. In March 1997, the Hebei Provincial Cultural Relics Bureau sent a team from the Hebei Cultural Relics Research Office to Zhuolu to carry out another archaeological exploration of the ancient city in response to a request from 31 delegates to the National People's Congress. The team was headed by Li Jun. Gu 和细石器 The latter part of the Neolithic age was about 5,000 years ago. When Li Juan carried out a preliminary investigation on this point, he discovered that from the latter part of the Neolithic age to the Warring States period, people lived in and had residences around the area of the ancient city of Zhuolu, and this can be seen from some of the relics unearthed by local people. One relic in particular greatly surprised the team of archaeologists due to its degree of perfection. Experts confirmed that this was a relic from the Neolithic age known as a stone year and that it was about 5,000 years old. In ancient times, the Yue was a symbol of royal power, but this Yue seemed to be even more special. One end had been fashioned to form the head of a dragon, and the other, the head of an owl. According to Zhao Yu Da, this might well be a symbol of power from the period of Emperor Huang Di, or the Yellow Emperor. Xiao <laughs> 是东夷集团的图腾的一部分这龙头呢是皇帝他的图腾这个东西呀大约在五千年左右那就是说皇帝统一了天下以后合乎府山各路
After nearly two weeks of surveying and mapping to gain a good feel of the situation and compile a comprehensive analysis, the archaeological team concluded that perhaps the only way to get a clear picture of the beginning of the ancient city of Zhuolu and understand its former appearance was through an archaeological dig. After careful study, they decided to select a number of exploration points in the northeast corner of the city where the layers were both fairly well preserved and quite thick. They decided to dig eight exploratory trenches in eight typical areas, with the area of the individual trenches, ranging from 6 to 20 square metres, determined by the structure of the layers. After test cores and subsequent digging, from the layers, several millennia of secrets hidden in the ancient city were gradually revealed. The layers were analysed section by section, the first being the 10 to 30 centimetre thick surface layer that had been recently found. Under this layer was the cultural layer from the Warring States period, a layer of lime soil. This layer, about 60 centimetres thick, provided the most direct evidence of the lives of people of that period. Hatali 當時的人口也是比較密集的。目前呢,在北方地區啊,像這麼大規模的古城啊,還是不多見的。Of particular interest was the ancient grave site that the team found in trench number 8. It proved to be a great delight. The grave site was in the form of an earthen vertical pit about 2.5 meters long by 1.5 meters wide by 2 meters deep. The funerary items found in the grave appeared to be somewhat simple, but the three pottery burial items were of great interest to the team. This was because among the items was a pottery tripod. Judging from the shape and design of the tripod and the two stemmed bowls unearthed from the grave, as well as the materials they were made from, Li Jun concluded that this is a grave from the Warring States period. The person buried here was male and died at the age of around 30 to 35. But was he an emperor or even a member of the royal family? Based on what was found in the tomb, Li Jun could conclude that it dated from the Warring States period. But this didn't really help to show when a city had first been built on the site. All Li Jun and his team could do was search for more clues. After browsing through historical records, Li Jun discovered that during the Warring States period, Zhuo Lu was under the control of the state of Zhao. In bamboo annals, it is recorded that in the year 320 BC, the state of Yan attacked the state of Zhao, and that the first place to be attacked was the important northern Zhao town of Zhuo Lu. When Zhao Emperor Wu Ling received the news, he personally led a large army from Handan on a long march of more than 500 kilometers to Zhuo Lu to engage the army of Yan in battle, forcing the Yan army to retreat to Xiaoliang. Judging from the great importance that Wu Ling placed on Zhuo Lu, Zhuo Lu must have been extremely important to the state of Zhao, as otherwise the emperor would not have personally led the army from the capital of Handan to save it. 
But who was the commander in charge of protecting the town at that time? I Based on this, it is Li Juin's judgment that the pottery Ding unearthed from this grave was probably a symbol, or that it in some way represented the hope that the deceased would be a man of great power in the next life. A month of digging on the part of the archaeological team turned up a great number of relics. After studying and analysing these relics, Li Juin determined that most of them were from the Warring States period and from the Qin and Han dynasties. Therefore, he made a preliminary conclusion that the city perhaps experienced its most flourishing age during the Warring States period and the Qin and Han periods. But it was not possible to establish from these relics when the city had been founded. In order to find evidence of when the city was first established, Li Juan knew he would have to look in the key area, inside the actual city walls. For several days, Li Jun carefully explored around the city wall. The local residents had already uncovered a portion of the western wall to half its height, and when Li Jun reached the foot of the wall, he discovered holes that had been used during construction to assist in building the wall. These holes clearly revealed how the wall had been built up layer by layer. At the same time, Li Juan also discovered embedded in the wall shards of pottery, crushed bones and crushed rocks. From this, he reasoned that the earth used to fill in the wall had come from two sources, virgin yellow earth and earth that contained evidence of the people who had lived there in earlier times. However, based only on this information and the situation as they now understood it, it was hard to draw any scientific conclusions. It was at this point that the team made a bold decision. Based on what they had discovered during their work over the past month, they decided to dismantle the wall. In doing so, they hoped to be able to uncover the origins of this ancient city, hidden for thousands of years. The ancient city of Duolu is laid out over a roughly square-shaped area of about 500 square metres. The base of the city wall is around 10 metres wide, and the top of the wall is about 3 metres wide. But long years of weather erosion and encroachment by weeds have reduced the once lofty city wall to a state of near oblivion. The entire length of the city wall bears marks here and there of damage caused by humans. To find out for sure if this really was the wall of the capital city of the Yellow Emperor Huang Di or not, a highly contentious issue among historians for decades, the team decided to conduct a trial dig in the southern wall. Wamazong 
Over a period of around three and a half weeks, the archaeologists opened up a section of the city wall three metres long by two metres wide. When they reached to a depth of three metres, they dug a trench about 50 centimetres wide. As they dug deeper, it was found that the rammed clay with which the city wall had been built became harder. Li Juan came to the conclusion that the city wall was built by ramming clay between clamping boards. This was a technique that involved erecting wooden boards secured with ropes and wooden poles along both sides of the city wall to be built, filling the space between them with clay and then ramming it solid. Further excavation confirmed Li Juan's deduction. In every layer of the rammed earth, holes once used for securing the ropes and poles were found. A hole for a rope was about 5 centimetres in diameter, while that for a pole was about 18 centimetres in diameter. What puzzled the archaeologists, however, was that in the rammed clay they found shards of grey and red pottery, pottery weaving wheels, and even animal bones. Tao 发掘到的陶片呢,就有所不同。But if these pottery objects were made before the Warring States period, where then had they come from? Were they placed there by the people who built the city wall with some kind of purpose? Or had people simply dumped them in the rammed clay as garbage? Li Juan thought long and hard about this question, but could not come up with an answer. So, he said, this is a The archaeologists worked on the 20 square meter exploration pit for 10 days. They dug to a depth of 7 meters and calculated that the city wall had been at least 7 meters high. The 7 meter high wall was built with no less than 43 layers of rammed clay, each about 20 centimeters thick. Such a high density of rammed clay layers show that the builders of the city had hoped to make the wall impregnable, as with thinner layers packed closely together, the city wall would be more solid. But discovering this feature only testified to the high technical level of the builders and could not prove when the wall was built. Miracles, it seems, always occur at times of greatest despair, 
And this was precisely Li Jun's experience one day, as he and his team were tidying up their tools, ready to leave. And suddenly, he felt he was being drawn by a mysterious force, which led him to the wall. Li Jun kept tapping at the wall in the exploration pit with a small spade. Then when he reached the bottom layer, he heard an echo that seemed to be emanating from a cavity within the wall. At this quite unexpected discovery, the exhausted archaeologists became excited. Elated at this discovery, the archaeologists found their fatigue and downcast mood accumulated over a month of fruitless work suddenly evaporating. However, they knew they had to be careful. They chipped at the hard clay of the city wall bit by bit with the utmost care, afraid that any careless move might break something of importance to be discovered inside. Li Jun examined the object in the wall carefully. It was a red pottery cooking pot made of a mixture of clay, mica powder and sand. When the archaeologists sorted through the objects inside the pot, they found it contained the lower jaw bones of pigs and dogs, the leg bones of various animals, the rib bone of an ox and deer antlers. The rib bone of the ox had been carefully polished, but it had been broken into three sections. Besides the animal bones, there were also a number of well-polished jade pieces, as bright as if they had only just been made. But oddly, the bottom of the cauldron bore no traces of smoke, and this could only mean that the cauldron had not been used for cooking before being placed inside the wall. From the contents in the object, the Juin concluded that this cauldron had been used as a sacrificial vessel by the builders of the city wall. Zaikudaya 这个斧从它的形制特点、烧制工艺上来看,它是一个典型的战国时候的器皿。它埋藏在这个城墙的最底层,说明借这座城的时候,就把它放了进去。The city has been confirmed as having been a major city during the Warring States period. But why is it mentioned in history books as being Huangdi's city, the city of the Yellow Emperor? What is the relationship between the city and Huangdi, the Yellow Emperor? Is this some kind of mistake by historians? Or was the city really the capital of the Yellow Emperor? This question has been still around us. We have been the 为战国所著的同时呢，那些夹杂在城墙里的陶片，却又给我们出了一道难题。从陶陶片的这个陶坯来看呢，像是这个新石器时代仰韶时期的，但是呢，由于陶片过于破碎，它的图案器形都无法明
但是我们可以肯定，他一定要早于战国。For many days, Li Jun continued to search along the city wall, hoping to find more relics. Eventually, his discoveries would convince him that there was more than just a grain of truth in the local legends and historical references about Huangdi City. But what was it that he discovered that led him to his conclusion? Thank you for staying with us on today's New Frontiers and tune in again next time when we'll continue our exploration of Huangdi City. I'm Ji Xiaojun from CCTV International. Goodbye.